In today's news, Blockchain Association Kristen Smith recently gave her insights on the upcoming regulatory clarification that may be provided in just a couple of months from now. This information was revealed in a webinar that was held by an institution. It is crucial for you to hear and comprehend first and foremost what such clarity will give for Ripple and for XRP, which is why we will hear more about what she has to say in a moment. This is because the news that she has to say is, of course, really significant. Keep in mind that it is still in private beta and has not yet been made available to the general public. This is most likely due to the fact that they are still waiting for regulatory frameworks in the United States. As we can see here from Chad Stingrabber, we are seeing a lot of the RLUSD Ripple stablecoin being moved around right now. All of this is taking place in just one day. On the other hand, as we can see right now, every single transaction takes XRP, which means that every single new wallet also requires XRP. Hence, this here is conclusive proof. The XRP will be utilized and will continue to be a component of it as a result of the widespread adoption of the RLUSD by the institutions for the purpose of making cross-border payments while operating in high-liquidity corridors. On the other hand, this is obviously very significant information for its price in the future. While it is true that the gas fees are quite low at the moment, it is important to keep in mind that the demand and transaction size are also rather low. Despite the fact that banks will most likely be moving millions, if not billions, if not billions of dollars all at once and with regulatory certainty, the amount to be transferred is only 260,000 RLUSD. There will be a rise in both the demand for RLUSD and the size of transactions, which will lead to an increase in both the demand for XRP and its price. There is a significant event that is taking place right now for Ripple, and it is taking place from the 15th to the 16th of October. We are able to see right here the Ripple Swell event, which is going to feature notable individuals such as our Czech CEO Graeme and Rodford and Chief Marketing Officer Simon Barnaby. T. These individuals will be present and will take part in a panel discussion on the relevance of tokenization in the digital era, which is a significant event. However, that is not all. We also have Gravesco. It is important to keep in mind that Grifsco has recently introduced an XRP trust, which will soon be an XRP exchange traded fund as well. Additionally, they will be there, and the head of product and research will be participating in a panel discussion on the convergence of blockchain technology and artificial intelligence, two aspects that are extremely important in this era of technological advancement. However, this is not the end of the story simply because we also have Uphold, who will be present at the event. It is important to bear in mind that Uphold will be the ones to list the RLUSD once it is implemented. That is public. Following the completion of the SEC's reform and the establishment of regulatory clarity, Upod will also speed up their cryptocurrency operations by reactivating the staking of XRP, which is currently disabled due to the authority of the SEC. My opinion is that the pattern, despite its apparent simplicity, is quite obvious. Ripple Swell, keep in mind that it is a event that was put on for the institution to learn more about the space to connect with each other, and all of those who are currently present are very bullish along with having a link to Ripple and XRP. Every single one of them is eagerly anticipating the establishment of regulatory frameworks in the United States, and Kristen Smith has stated that through participating in this institutional webinar. They have obtained a fresh viewpoint on the current standing of a number of different crypto laws. They have been working on some of these bills since 2019, which is almost five years now in fact. They probably have been working on them for more than that now. They anticipate that some of these measures will be enacted very fast, possibly as soon as December of this year, which is a really exciting development. Give it your whole attention. The first is legislation that is stable for coins. This dates all the way back to 2019, when Facebook made the announcement about the Libra Pop project. A significant amount of interest has been shown in stable coin. And the difficulty is that there is no legal framework in place to deal with stable coins. This is the dilemma. Those laws don't actually apply to them because they are so dissimilar to what we see in the typical banking sector of today, that there are audits involved, as well as some criteria about this matter. The federal law of today does not include anything like this at all. Therefore, having that framework in place is something that ought to be something that is not too difficult to accomplish. Depending on how productive a legislative session is, it is possible that it will take place during the lame duck. The lame duck refers to the period of time that occurs between the election and the beginning of the new Congress. Therefore, the month of December in its whole. To tell you the truth, that is something that could be done in the lame duck, or I believe that it is something that could go very rapidly, like Q1 and Q2, for the next year. If that is the case, then why would it proceed more quickly than other issues? Due to the fact that it is a relatively isolated problem that has been well investigated. As a general rule, I would argue that the legislative process is not something that takes place in a couple of weeks or a couple of months. When it comes to something that is all-encompassing, it can take anywhere from 7 to 10 years to get a measure passed. Is that correct? And for example, if you look back to the year 2019 or the year 2025, you will notice that this is something that has been the subject of more than a dozen legislative hearings on legislation pertaining to stable coins. In both the House of Representatives and the Senate, drafts have been created. There have been a great number of ideas that have been evaluated and improved upon by the general public, and it is very close to being ready to launch. You should not be under the impression that somebody just launched it the day before yesterday. 
compared to other issues, this one has been the subject of debate for a longer period of time. Then, I have created a free-to-join Discord server for 100 of US right now, a worker towards achieving this financial freedom, spreading our knowledge in order to make as much money as possible in this bull cycle. I. If you want to join, then click the link in the description below because, as you can see, time is moving quickly. This is the reason why it is time for you to look into or enter the trenches, if you will, to do your own research. We are currently waiting to witness the largest liquidity injection that has ever been introduced into the cryptocurrency market and also into XRP. The supply is running low. And while we're on the subject, the legal struggle between Ripple and the SEC is also ongoing, so let's keep our fingers crossed that the price of XRP will increase very soon. In this post, Elena Terra, a writer for Fox Business, draws attention to the fact that the so-called revolving door at the Securities and Exchange Commission has been particularly absurd this year. Some of their most senior officials are departing the agency, and it seems that some of them, if not all of them, are moving on to companies that are really in favor of and supportive of cryptocurrency. This is something that I find absolutely insane. First, there is Caroline Welshens, who was the former active chief of the crypto asset and cyber unit and has since moved on to work for Morgan Lewis Law. Next, there is Gerber Grawl, who was the former enforcement director and has since moved on to Millbank Law, where he represents Binance in its fight against the SESEC. Next, there is David Hirsch, who was the former head of the crypto and cyber unit and has since moved on to McGuire Woods LLP as the crypto advisor. Finally, you cannot forget about Layden Stewart, who litigated against Coinbase and Ripple and who is now working for Whitecase to assist them in the crypto-related enforcement actions. The fact that they have all left carried weapons like the SEC and embraced cryptocurrency in order to do so effectively save their jobs is, in my opinion, incredible. It is important to keep in mind that I believe altogether has completely destroyed all possibility of being legally enforced at this time, unless they immediately depart to join crypto assets. And then there is this piece that was published by the town hall to bring attention to the fact that there is a compelling need for change, which of course we are already aware of. If we could just stop hearing this entirely. They simply carry out the tasks that are required of them, despite the fact that this repeating record is done over and over again. Take Kathy Gensler out of the picture. I mean, I believe you understand why I am here, but let's just stop talking and get to work on something more important. Furthermore, it would appear like Ripple and XRP are going to be the ones to spearhead this movement. The conclusion regarding Ripple is crystal apparent, and Ripple CEO Brad garden Weiss discusses it once more in a somewhat quick manner here on Bloomberg. Take a more attentive listen. For the sake of clarity, I would want to explain that the verdict in question did not differentiate between individual investors and institutional investors. Thanks for your understanding. It did not happen. According to what was actually stated, the investment contract is considered a security in the same way that if you package up real estate or even pork bellies and put them into an investment contract, the investment contract itself is a security. On the other hand, the ruling makes it abundantly obvious that XRP, all things considered, is not a security in and of itself. Would you agree with that, Brad? I see. In light of this, one of the reasons why President Trump is a proponent of cryptocurrency is because he does not want China to be more crypto-friendly than the United States. It would be considered a significant concern if China were to exceed the United States in terms of the innovation it has made around cryptocurrencies. In any case, I am unable to comment on China in particular. Nevertheless, what we are witnessing is that a group of over 20 countries, including the United Kingdom, Japan, Singapore, and even the European Union, have collaborated in order to establish a framework that will offer regulation for cryptocurrencies. They refer to it as MICA. The fact that we as a nation are unable to establish the norms and the framework is something that I find really aggravating, both as a firm based in the United States and as someone who was born and raised in the Midwest. And in its place, we have this never-ending litigation coming from the Securities and Exchange Commission, which is not actually helping to solve the problem. In conclusion, the laws are quite clear, as stated once more. Even taking into consideration the current circumstances, it would appear that the time we are waiting for is the moment when the elections will take place, which is only three weeks away from now. That will be the crypto catalyst, so make sure you brace yourself. In addition to conducting your own research, you can also come to Gavin's Blood's feeder score server to relax, chat, and learn more.